Now, specifically regarding the scope and the timing of the audit, right? We talked about the scope. We're going to do this during the audit. We're not going to do that. An audit, I mean, is the most in depth of any engagement. So you're going to probably do the most procedures. If you're doing a review or you know another type of engagement, you're going to communicate that, hey, we are not going to do the things that we would do in an audit. Now, you know, timing, we should communicate with those charged with governance in overview of the plan scope and timing of the audit. You know, we're going to have it done within a month. We're going to have weekly meetings. We're going to have deadlines. We're going to report back to you. This is also going to include communicating significant risks identified by the auditor. If you discover management fraud, you should probably, not probably, I mean, this is the rule, you're going to tell the individuals on the board of directors right away, and you're going to let them know. Maybe you'll investigate a little bit further first to make sure it doesn't go deeper than just people in management, but that is uh, going to be something that we will see. All right, now in addition to discussing the scope and the timing of an audit, you're also going to communicate these other points, which are going to be pretty important to let those charged with governments know. We want to communicate the auditor's view about qualitative aspects of the entity's significant accounting policies, including accounting policies, estimates, and disclosures. These are all items that could have a level of subjectivity, and that's going to be important because you may have clashes with management about those. When applicable, the auditor should explain to those charged with governance why the auditor considers a significant accounting practice that is acceptable under GAAP not to be most appropriate to the particular circumstances of the entity. Now, that's important because you may find that, okay, this, is, this entity is in a particular industry, and because of that and because of the seasonality of their business, it may not make sense to follow GAAP. That's, that's just up to the auditor. That's based on the auditor's experience, and that's something we may see. We are also going to determine that those charged with governance are informed about the process used by management in formulating sensitive accounting estimates, fair value estimates, reasonableness, and the basis of all of that. We want to make sure that the board of directors, and these are the fiduciaries, right? Those who should have the best interest of the company at heart. We want to make sure they know what management's doing so that when we come in and say, this is what we think should really happen. There's no miscommunication. There's no disagreements there. We all fully understand. We also want to communicate any significant, unusual transactions, if any. We want to ask them, hey, board of directors, what's going on here? We want your take on it as well as management's take, as well as anyone involved in the transaction. What else should we communicate with those charged with governance? Any difficulties during the audit, if it's uh, particularly difficult to work with management, if you're having difficulties just getting things done, getting audit evidence, anything that's going to hinder the audit, because guess what? Those charged with governance are the board of directors. The board of directors constitutes the audit committee, and the audit committee is who hired you. So you want to tell who hired you if you're having any problems. So make sure you're able to get the audit done. Any disagreements with management, that's going to be important there. Make sure we you want to document any of those because these could lead to problems in the audit. This could lead to a potential, you're essentially documenting issues because if you then have to give an adverse opinion or, or a modified opinion, these disagreements with management could have led to that. And you're documenting your, your rationale for that particular opinion. You also want to communicate any circumstances that affect the form and content of the report. Because if you're modifying that report, right, just like we said, if you're modifying the report, you're not giving them a clean opinion, you want the reasons for doing so. You're not just going to say, oh, oh yeah, I remember there was problems. I, I don't really remember what they were because I didn't document them. I didn't communicate them with you. But there were problems that were modifying your opinion. So that's not, that's not too appropriate there. We also want to communicate matters that are difficult or contentious for which the auditor consulted an outside team. These would be, oh, okay, like we are auditing a very... Uh, specific niche technology company, and we are not particularly adept at this. We need some outside consulting. We need to understand what's going on with this because it's something that's quite difficult. Yeah, so this is something we communicate with the, those charged with governance because this is their responsibility. It's to oversee the financial reporting process. And if you as the auditor are having difficulty, they would be the ones to want to know. We also want to communicate other findings or issues, if any, that arise during the audit that in the auditor's professional judgment are significant and relevant to those charged with governance regarding the responsibility to oversee the financial reporting process. Right? As we see, a lot of times there's kind of catch-all points where it just says, hey, if there's any problems, anything that would hinder their ability to do their job, you should probably communicate that. 
Hey there, are you ready to not only pass your CPA exams, but truly understand and enjoy the material while studying? I know it seems impossible, right? Especially to enjoy the material? We'll do it together. Tap into the power of cpa.examprep.ai, where we've got personalized quizzes, multiple choice questions, memorization guides, flashcards, simulations, all tailored to your learning. Our adaptive study planning puts you on the fastest path to success and lifts you back up if you fall behind. Avoid wasting your precious time and money attempting an exam with a low chance of passing because who wants that? We want to get you through this process as quick as possible. Our exam readiness prediction lets you walk in with confidence knowing that you're prepared for success on exam day. Thankfully, there's no payment method needed to get started. So why don't you come join us? Visit cpa.examprep.ai and let's achieve your exam success together.